trigger warning if you don't like medical procedures or bodily functions, because that is the whole premise of today. Are you looking for a podcast about your complicated, will-they-won't-they they relationship with media? Well, you must be thinking of another podcast. Oh! Good evening, Kelsey. Well, good evening, Robert. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What were you thinking about? Tell me. I say, good evening, Kelsey, at the beginning of every show, and I'm like, no one's probably listening to this in the evening. <laughs> I know, it's probably morning, wherever wherever you are, your Monday morning warrior at your desk. I mean, when uh, when Ferdin does it, I mean, it's the evening, or yeah. you could call it incredibly early morning. Yeah. So I was thinking about that when I was editing, like, the, you know, 20 something one, and I was like... I mean, it's not even evening now when I'm editing this. I'm like, I feel weird. (laughs) I don't know. But as of right now, 7.02 p.m. on a Tuesday. Yeah, so good evening. It works. Welcome to the evening. It feels like we haven't recorded in a while, but we recorded last week. I know. I I don't think that I was physically present (laughs) for last week. Maybe my body was in this chair, but like... A spirit had taken over me. My sick, my sick body was just laying in this chair, and some other being took my vocal cords, borrowed them, recorded this podcast with you. Because I don't even remember last pod. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember. But see, it. you were so engaged with it too. I was so fucked up on I don't know medicine. <laughs> oh man. But 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 listen to this. I got a okay. piece of good news. Okay. I can have <gasps> seltzer again. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I haven't had I haven't had a seltzer in like five weeks. And let me just take take a good whiff of this. Ah, yes. So let is that the seltzer sip. with the doctor flavor? It is a cherry bubbly. Ooh, and it goes down so smooth. All right, you're gonna have to tell me the kind you get because I'm gonna need some of the doctor flavor. Yeah, you're gonna. Yeah, I think. See, I, I don't even remember. It just feels like so long ago. But I think when we recorded last week, the next day, I was going to go see a movie. What movie? And I have to tell you about it now, finally. Tell me about it. I don't think I did. I, I saw It Chapter 2. Oh, I can't believe they kept this from me. How was it? Uh, It's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Good. And and people are shitting on it. Yeah, a lot of people don't like it, and I understand why. Apparently Pennywise is homophobic. Okay, so <laughs> this is this is not even a spoiler. Okay. But I don't see how, apparently... Uh, okay, so Richie in this, in this movie is played by Bill Hader, right? Bill Hader. Ooh, it's weird. I, I just got an email with red balloons in it. And it just says, play a game with me, would you? No. Oh my god, <laughs> float in to see the number... It's it, It's about it. I just spoke its name and it's on my phone. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Oof. Alright, so... Turn around, he's right behind you. <gasps> no, it's just jinx. <laughs> uh, apparently in this movie, it's like... Never fully said, but it's heavily hinted that... Uh, Bill Hader's character is gay. Okay. And it's never really, to me, been a thing. It was not really in the book. Wasn't really in the old movie. But that's just, you know, a turn they decided to take with this one. Right? Okay. And so, I guess I can see the line that people got that from. But what people need to understand is Pennywise's soul purpose in life is to take the things that you're worried about and make them sound as bad as it can possibly be back to you right the fuck does he care if if you're gay or not he just wants to eat your fucking face off (laughs) like he doesn't care zero percent does he care he doesn't discriminate he just wants that face so the line with is is probably when so he's taunting him and he's all like like, I know the exact scene. Like, as soon as you said people think that he's homophobic, I know the exact line. I know the whole thing. Uh, when he's terrorizing Richie as an adult, 
So, mild spoilers, but it's a three-hour movie. Trust me, this one oh, part's fuck. not gonna ruin the movie for you. He doesn't, like, call him by a gay slur or something, right? No. Okay, good. Like I said, this movie very, very subtly hints that he's gay. Okay. To the point that I had to read news articles and go, oh, I can see where people got this idea, because I didn't even take that away when I watched it. Like, 0% did I take that away, and now that I'm thinking about it and what people have written, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see where that came from, right? So what's the scene? So he's terrorizing Richie, and he's like, he's like, how about you play a game with me? He's like, ooh, let's play Street Fighter, because in the memory previous, Richie had been playing Street Fighter in the 80s, right? Uh And he goes, oh, wait, what if we play Truth or Dare? But you don't want people to pick truth, do you, Richie? And then he starts singing this song to him about how he knows his secret. And then he says, I know your dirty little secret. That's it? And I bet people are taking your dirty little secret as, oh, well, he he, he thinks gays are dirty, so he's homophobic and he doesn't like that. What? He, there's nothing else that he could possibly have said that I can think of that would All mean right. that. Like, Weird. that's it. That's the only part. Okay. Well, if Pennywise isn't an ally, then he isn't an ally. We, we all want to kill Pennywise anyway. He's terrifying. I feel like he doesn't give a shit about nothing. He just wants to eat you. So, anyway, it's three fucking hours, dude. That is, uh, that's honestly too long for a horror movie. I'm not going to sit there for three so, hours. So, here's the thing. It is good. It is a fantastic movie. But, mm-hmm. everybody knows that the best part about it is is when they're kids. Yeah. Like, it's when they're kids, because that's when they're most vulnerable to everything that's going to happen. Yeah, you know? and every like everything that Pennywise could turn into when you're a kid is much more like an honest fear, you know? Yeah. Whenever you're an adult, you're afraid of, like, taxes. Uh, what's yeah. Pennywise going to turn into? An accountant? Like, the adult part of this movie is necessary, because that's, you know, the whole premise is that they come back, right? Yeah. But it won't ever be as scary because they're adults. I mean, I think the things that he turns into are way more hardcore than the first one. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He does some wild shit, man. Oh, my God. I still... That fucking... That trailer with the old lady, like, stomping around. I I can't. Okay. (laughs) When that part actually happens, it's wild. Really? (laughs) Yeah. She comes stomping out and she's, like... (laughs) She's this creature that is like as tall as the ceiling and she's like this witch and her hair's all floating around all crazy and there's like mouths in her neck that are screaming the words she's screaming and she's just like chasing her around fully naked boobs all drooping out and stuff okay it it was a wild scene but then it has one of my favorite parts though like right after i'm gonna go ahead and tell you this part though so spoiler again so apparently in the first movie because you watch that one right Mm-hmm. Remember when Bev uh, gets gets in the deadlights? Like the deadlights. He opens his mouth and like shines those lights in her face, and she goes all like catatonic and floats in the air. Yes. Okay, so the deadlights are those lights that are like his power, kind of, right? Okay. Well, so when she got caught in the deadlights, it apparently gave her these nightmares, and so she has seen everybody from the Losers Club dying at some point in their lives so she's Shit. essentially seen the future and so when she goes to that house and the old lady stomps out she like turns down a hallway and pennywise shows up at like the end of this long hallway and he starts like telling her like you haven't changed anything you haven't changed their futures you think you're going to but you're not gonna and he's just like a normal dude right okay and he's slowly slathering on white face paint And then he, like, takes his fingers and cuts his skin open to do, to do, like, that, that, like, red paint part. Yeah. He, like, slices his fingernails into his skin to form (laughs) that. And he's all bleeding and stuff. And then he screams at her and it was dope. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. It was so good. All right. But so, if you truly like the It story and all that stuff, you gotta go see it in the theater because the ending it's a three-hour movie but that ending is worth the wait okay 
I could watch that ending all day. And it's like a 40-minute battle. God. There's so much happening in the ending. And it's it's really good. I kind of think it's perfect. It's great. Good. So does it's any really of good. the stuff from this movie come from the actual book? Or is this just all new stuff? They try to stick way closer to the book in this one. I'd say this part is like 50-50. Okay. I didn't even know that they became adults in the book. I thought it was all about them being children. So the book is all about them being adults, and then you only get the kid parts in, like, flashbacks. What? Yeah, so the book opens with them getting the phone calls, hey, you gotta come back, and then... So the whole gist is they can't remember what happened. Yeah. Because when you leave the town, his power kind of, like... Makes you forget the stuff that happened so no one will ever come back to try to stop him, right? Okay. So none of them know. And when they come back to town, they have to, like, jog their memories. And that's when you get all the stuff that happened to them as kids that you see in the first movie. Oh, I see. All right. So it's a good conclusion. I did kind of laugh at the end. I thought it was a little funny. But, like, the more I've thought about it, I'm like, dude, for a movie, this is about as good as you're going to get right now. Good. Like, well, that's it. This is good. I want to see it, but Richard won't see it with me, uh, so I'll probably have to wait till it to come out. Dude, um, I don't think there's any chance of him. There's no way he'll be scared. But he I think like he'll just be moderately like, scared. What the movies, fuck though. is happening? This is taking so long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's a complaint I've seen a lot of people have. This movie, as soon as they scare you with something like super fucking scary, they immediately follow it with a joke, and it like lightens you up immediately well that's good i suppose that kind of sucks if he's a scary <laughs> son of a bitch i want to feel fucked up and scared <laughs> so it's less of a scary movie would you call it a thriller i would call it more of a thriller okay it's because it's the thrill of are they gonna figure out what to do are they gonna figure out how to stop him can they even stop him what is this thing what are we gonna do yeah it's not so much ooh spooky you know spooky scary skeleton. It was fantastic. I loved it. Good. Oh, we have a listener mail that I briefly want to talk about. Oh, okay. It's from Haley, and it was just like, maybe like 10 words. <laughs> it's very okay. brief. <laughs> she sent it, and it was like, uh, I'm not even going to open it up, but it says, quick note, baking is science, and cooking is instinct. <laughs> That's all it said. <laughs> Perfect. I totally I agree with that. It's like, thank you, Haley. You validated me. I have no instinct. I actually cooked a really good dinner tonight. I was proud of myself. It was chicken. I with, saw like, your chicken. Seasoning. They look yeah. They, they look perfect. I Snapchat to do my chicken. It was all yeah. sizzling in the pan. It was so nice. Put some I, garlic salt on that thing. I will one hundred percent go with that because when you put like something that's baking in the oven, you can't really watch it to know when it's perfect. Right. You know. You, you got to gotta know. Like, yeah. That this is the time limit that is set. Yes. Right? Because even if, if you were to like open the oven just to check for a brief second, you've thrown off the whole temperature stuff that yeah. now it's going to come out different. You know? I know. And I remember like being a kid, I would always open the fucking oven. I, I want to like go back and hit myself. They're like, stop it. The cookies <laughs> are taking longer now. Like when I brown the meat, right? There is uh-huh. no science. I literally just sit there and I just like go, that feels right. That's good. See, I'm, I don't like that. This like, is I want to know when the meat is done because my instinct is to serve raw meat. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's bad. I mean, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> you can't really serve raw stuff. I mean, once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. Yeah. Have you seen that stuff where people eat raw chicken? Yes, quote unquote like, medium rare chicken. Like, what is yeah, dude. your problem? No, uh, cook it. Uh, you gotta cook it until it is white all the way through. No pink. No see, pink in that chicken. That is a science because you like are trying <laughs> to do that, right? And yeah, that is you, bad science. That's bad. <laughs> that's bad science. We don't do that. Not good. Yeah. Science says no to this. You can get for real, real sick eating raw chicken. And then I have to tell you one more thing today. Which is a thank you. I must thank you, Kelsey. Oh, you're welcome. For what? In the wee hours of the morning, I'm driving into work. I get a text from you that says, Did you see that the Super Nintendo controllers were released and they're already sold out? Yes. And I was like, 
fuck that. I check that shit every day. <laughs> so I'm driving into work with my phone in my hand, barely looking Don't at the road, trying, <laughs> trying to get on the website and check, right? Oh, my God. So I bought one. On the car ride to work this morning because of your text, right? Please, please don't buy things while you're driving. But I had to. And don't guess shop what? And, drive. and guess what? What? I think I may have got one. I think I may have snuck in at the last second and got one of the last ones. I don't even know how that works. Because, like, I went on Twitter and it was just, like, in my Twitter moments, it was like, Nintendo controllers sold out. And I was like, they haven't even gone on sale yet. So I clicked on it and oh, a bunch of people no. were complaining and they were like, I went to the Nintendo website because I saw these things went on sale. I didn't even get an e- email about it. Yeah. And like, they go to buy them and they get them in their cart. And by the time they check out, the things are sold out. I went to the website on my phone and uh-huh. it said orders may ship out uh, September 18th, which is tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And in I go, time. okay. So I clicked it and it took me to the thing and said, how many you want? I put in one because it's all I want. And... It went through the whole thing. I put in my my Nintendo account thing. I put in my card number. I hit buy. I have an order number. I mean, I must have bought one. That's just bizarre to me. I don't know. I'm going to have to buy Richard and be like, hey, buy buy these with your account. Because I want to see if they're <clears throat> well secret s- stock. So, oh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe that was the difference. Because when I was checking just now... No? Okay. So, so I'm logged in with my account right now on the website on my computer. Uh huh. And the Super Nintendo controller used to say coming soon, and that was it, right? Yeah. Now it's just listed on the site, but there is no button that says buy now, see details, nothing. It's simply listed on the page with no way to get one. That's crazy. So I must have been one of the last people to get in there with this thing. For real? Damn. Because there's nothing on the side for it now. And I did the same thing on my phone when I went to buy it, so this is the place to go. Get your shit together, Nintendo. I gotta give you a thank you, because if I actually get a thing that says it shipped out tomorrow, it's all because of you, because I would have not checked until later in the day and been screwed. You would have been so sad. So, a billion thank yous, Kelsey. I'm so fucking happy. A billion? You're welcome. Oh my god. It's like the best day. Did you have any weekly updates? I don't think I do. Continuing to be sick. Well, you know, I'm actually on the other side of this. I think I don't it's it's so hard to say, man. So which is weird because you didn't really get anything done to cure anything. So here's the thing. Okay, are we going to just like slide into our topic here? Let's go ahead and slide right in with your one weekly update. Okay. So I've been like dancing around <clears throat> saying what I've been going through and what's been happening to me, but like Oh, I just thought you were going to say dancing around death. That too. (laughs) Just dancing around my own gravestone here. But uh, I just don't... I'm beyond the point of shame at this point. I had to have a colonoscopy at 29. (laughs) So, like... So, like, you had to drink the stuff... I had to... uh, That flushes uh, you out. Now, wait, wait, wait. You know what? Just... Okay, just go ahead and go through the whole thing. Okay, so, yeah, I've been sick for a very long time. Basically, my body is, like, rejecting food. And they were like... Uh, okay, we're gonna do a bunch of tests and see if it's in your blood, see if it's in your your fucking poop. I had to poop into little science cups and mail them away, which is just (laughs) the worst thing I've ever had to do, maybe. But, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna air it all out on this pod, you guys. I hope that you're not squeamish, so. Well, don't, like, air that out, like, keep the cups sealed. (laughs) Yeah, I'm keeping those cups sealed. They are, (laughs) they are mailed away and they're in a biohazard facility somewhere. Um... But yeah, so they've been doing tests and stuff on me and they're like, we can't find anything wrong, but like my body's still real fucked up about it. So they were like, let's look inside you. So now you had said, I'm pretty sure in one of the previous pods that it felt like there was a viper that you had swallowed and was biting your insides. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was praying for it because you said that they were going to go look inside and do a biopsy. Uh huh. And so, listeners, if you don't know what a biopsy is, that's where they cut off a piece of something to go study it and see what's wrong with it. Yeah. So I was hoping they wouldn't have to cut you and that when they went in there, you would have diverticulitis. 
because yeah, they could just really, see that. I was hoping for not diverticulitis, and thank God it's not that. So, yeah, so I went into the procedure. Um, it, where do I start with this? So I just start with like the procedure itself. So I would start with the fact that when you told me about it, I was like, I cannot wait for you to drink this stuff and just be like completely oh, emptied out. I, so in order to prepare for a colonoscopy, your colon has to be clean as the day you were fucking born. Like the day God created your intestines. <laughs> so it's just the worst. I, I hate it. I'd like, I have PTSD just reminiscing about well, this. Well, see, you never really said anything bad that day. So it's I like, didn't oh, want to like, I guess it's not you. so bad. <laughs> no, man, it's horrible. So I had, I got a 32 ounce bottle of blue Gatorade. And okay. I got a big gallon empty jug and I have to, I had to buy just like standard laxative pills and. Oh, so they didn't give you like the liquid stuff to drink? Well, I, I had to purchase it myself. So I bought the, I bought okay. the pills and then I also had to buy a powder Okay. and I bought a 14 day supply of the powder because that's what I was instructed to do. Yeah. And I had to drink. 14 days worth of laxatives in two hours. Oh my god. Robert, uh, I was clean. Oh I my was god. empty. <laughs> I've never been so empty in my life. God, for people out there who have never had a colonoscopy, I I just... People who have had a colonoscopy, I f- feel for you. I don't want to do that ever again. I know I'm going to have to because it's just a standard human process that we all have to do. Yeah, But... Oh, dude. I just like, see, I, don't... I only know of people that have, and I've seen what happens when they have to drink the stuff, but I've never even... Compl- I've never taken a laxative to begin with. Yeah, so I had to take four laxative pills, and then two hours later, drink 32 ounces of, like, laxative solution, essentially, and then the next morning, <sighs> do it again. Okay. And So, wait, wait, but... wait, wait, wait. Two days in a row? Yes. Essentially? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, it was it was awful. Uh, How like do you at sleep? first, I didn't. <laughs> at first, when I was drinking it, I was like, I don't even feel like it's doing anything. Like nothing is happening. I'm not gonna poop. This is not gonna happen. Yeah. And Richard was like, Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't yet. And then like, so hang on, hang on. I'm gonna have to go insert this a little bit ahead. Okay. But trigger warning. If you don't like (laughs) medical procedures or bodily functions, because that is the whole premise of today. We're getting into it, guys. We're going to, we're opening the book. So FYI, listeners, you're going to go, why did I already hear that line? Because I just said it now, but I'm going to transpose it back before all this starts. Okay, great. Enjoy. So you're like, oh, I don't feel anything. I must have a super stomach. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I'm not going to poop. And then... Suddenly, I was like, oh, I've got to poop. <laughs> Suddenly. So, like, thankfully, I was very close to the toilet. But, like, dude, by the time I was done with it, it was like I was peeing out my butt. So, that was going to be my question. Does it just fall out? Or do you just have normal <laughs> poop? It's just it happening just, a lot. It was just, like, water. Like, just water. Nothing else. So, does just, this stuff just, like vaporize everything in your colon and it's like oh well that's just gonna just slide on out now just everything comes out everything you've ever eaten in your whole life i was seven (laughs) pounds lighter after i did this than i was before it was so bad (laughs) yeah so so i had to go in to get the colonoscopy and i was really scared because i'm terrified of medical procedures in general i am terrified of needles i don't like i don't like doctors i just i'm getting better with it as I get older, because especially this year, I've been, you know, so, so sick. Yeah. But, um, so I went in and I told the lady, I was like, I'm super scared of needles and I'm terrified right now. Because when you go back to the, the prep room, they don't let you have a visitor with you or anything. And typically I have Richard oh, no. come with me for like all medical stuff. Yeah. He's like my, my, uh, what do you call him? Those little, like, like a dog that you have that you pet for happiness. A like therapy service dog. dog? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's my therapy dog. But um, my therapy husband. Get over here and let me pet your scruff! <laughs> so typically, you know, I would have him, but I didn't. And I was like, please be so kind. Be so gentle. <laughs> and she was like, okay, what we can do is give you like a numbing shot so you don't feel the IV. And I was like, that sounds great. 
And so, okay. and instead of sticking me in my arm, I sent you pictures of how bruised I was after yeah. all of the other procedures I had. Instead of sticking me like in the crook of my arm, you know, she yeah. got me on my wrist, which <gasps> no, it was so much better. What? <laughs> I have like a really big vein there. So she was like, I can oh, see this one. I, I'm going to get it. I just thought you meant for like the shot to like numb you. Well, that too. I mean, right, right into the wrist. No, weird. <laughs> it was so weird. It was fine. Like the initial shot, Numb I just my felt arm, like... like in like the arm part, like where you do flu shots and let it trickle down. Shit. <laughs> no, it's just like a little local anesthetic. So it's just like a little okay. two inch radius thing that she numbed. It was like lidocaine. Yeah. So oh, okay, she did okay. that. And then she did the IV and I didn't even feel the IV. Like I was so impressed. I was like, thank you. you this is honestly the best experience I've ever had in a medical procedure. I just bet you turned and said, I love you. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> just look deep into that nurse's eyes and be like, please, I need to, I need you for all my procedures. <laughs> um, but then like after that, they'd like let me alone in the room. And okay. when I'm alone, I start to like spiral out of control a little bit. So I was just like sitting there like, I'm going to die on this bed before they oh even get God. back to surgery. <laughs> and uh, I didn't die. But um, the nurse who was going to wheel me back there, she came in and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm really scared. <laughs> and she was like, it's going to be fine. It's just like a big nap. And I was like, what if I don't wake up? Don't call it the big nap. <laughs> <laughs> nurse, this is bad. The big nap. <laughs> And so they get me back to the room and there's like all these people in there. There's the anesthesiologist. There's like a nurse. There's another lady who's in charge of like the lab equipment and stuff. There's the actual yeah. doctor who's doing the procedure. And then there's like one dude who's a lab tech and he's like, okay. I'll be assisting your doctor. And I'm like, please, like, I don't, I don't want a guy in this room. Like, I don't want any other men to see my butt. Please. <laughs> I have a husband. So, <laughs> so quick, quick aside. Uh-huh. I know that I talk about this podcast all the time, but there's a good reason. I just love these guys. So on Nerds the Podcast, right? Uh-huh. One of the guys has had something wrong with his butt. Oh, no. And he's been talking about it on the podcast. <laughs> and so he had to go in and, like, have his butt checked out by a doctor because they didn't know what was wrong with it. It's just the worst, man. It's it's really a, such a personal location. Like, that's my yeah. butt. Don't look at it. There's this girl nurse in there, and he was like, yo, come on, man, don't. <laughs> look away. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't shaved it. <laughs> like, just, like, all these things. And I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, it's fair. Dude, I, like, shaved my legs for my colonoscopy. I was like, I just... <laughs> I don't know what level to prepare. To look presentable. I know. I want to look good in that hospital gown. I mean, I mean, it's kind of like a date, so... I guess. I mean, the worst date ever. Yeah. Uh, but So, so like, the guy had to stay in there, of course. Yeah. Okay. I was really freaked out, because I've never been under anesthesia before. And so uh, I told the people, like, this is my first time in anesthesia. I'm really scared. And the lady was like, I'll hold your hand. And then, like, Aww. my hands were all just covered in tubes and stuff. So she was like, I'm going to hold your arm instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you <laughs> medical monster. <laughs> uh, but then, so the anesthesiologist, when she was, like, doing the medicine, she talked me through it and everything, okay. so it felt better. She was like, okay, so I'm going to start with the medicine, and it's going to feel, like, kind of cold and thick. See, that's really great. Like, don't just do shit. Like, give me, like, some warning. Yeah. So that's that's great. It was fantastic. <laughs> One of the nurses in the room, she was like, if you ever drink wine, it's kind of like drinking too much wine and then falling asleep. <laughs> I was like, that's not helpful. But uh, so anyway, she's like, okay, it's going to feel cold and weird. And then you're going to feel a metal metallic taste in your mouth. And okay. uh, that's exactly what happened. And then I was started to say, I'm so dizzy. And that's the last thing I remember. Awesome. Yeah. So then, like, I feel like I had a dream when I was under anesthesia. Uh -huh. They said that you may or may not dream. I feel like I dreamt about Overwatch, but I'm not sure. Oh my god. <laughs> They're like, then, is she mumbling in her sleep? And you're just, pew, pew. <laughs> Cavalry's here. She yell at Jeff. <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> uh, no. So then I didn't wake up until I went back. They like wheeled me out of the 
you know, the little surgery room and back to yeah. the recovery section. And so when I was coming out of the anesthesia, I was so like, I, I was still scared because I was having, I was under the fear of like going under, you know? Yeah. So I still had this like fear happening and I swear to God, it sounded like fireworks were going off and it was so loud. You'd like, you know, those fireworks are like, pow, and they like fizzle. Yeah. That's exactly what it sounded like. Like big, that loud, like gunshot weird. and then fizzle and then gunshot and then fizzle. And I started to like try to move my body, but I was still under the anesthesia. So it was a little bit like sleep paralysis. Yeah. So I could like sort of see, but I was hearing all these firework noises and I couldn't move. And I was like, am I, am I alone? Am I alone? (laughs) Am I dying? (laughs) Just like trying to yell for somebody like, please, what are the fireworks? (laughs) And I just like feel this hand on my shoulder. And she was like, Uh it's okay. You're in recovery. (laughs) And I'm like, Please, husband. <laughs> so Please, like, husband. <laughs> I need my husband. And so they like went out and got him. I, that's that's the last uh, that I remember of like waking up. But eventually, I yeah. was like awake and totally lucid. And so I wanted to bring up this thing that's called exploding head syndrome. Okay. So I've had the experience before where like I'm falling asleep. You know how sometimes when you're falling asleep and it feels like your body is falling. No. Like, Really? You never had the sensation where you're like, you feel like you're physically falling and then you kind of like wake up with a jolt? I mean, I have if like, I'm like leaning on my head and like my head starts to fall, but I've never (laughs) just been like laying perfectly on a flat surface, falling asleep and felt like my body was falling. Really? I thought that was a common human thing. But I also don't sleep a lot, so I probably don't have a lot of the sleep feelings. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, so there's like an auditory version of that. Where sometimes when you're falling asleep, you'll hear a loud, like, gunshot or a firework. Okay. And it's, like, it'll start you awake. And I've experienced this before, like, typically in really stressful times. If Like, when I was experiencing my sleep paralysis really frequently, you know? Yeah. uh, I would have this gunshot problem that I, after listening to a podcast called Stuff You Should Know found out is exploding head syndrome where stress or anxiety can cause you to, it's like a misfire in your brain you're uh-huh. actually like hearing your brain shut down for sleep uh-huh. and they compared it to like you know how at the at the mall they have those like gates where they close the shop and it's like a big metal grate yeah it's like your brain going through the mall and like closing the grates and then one of them accidentally like lets the grate drop so it's like bang <laughs> <laughs> damn That's it a, carl yeah, so I did some research on exploding head syndrome, and it turns out that it can also happen when you're waking up. So I feel like that's what happened to me when I was waking up from anesthesia. Huh. I was still really stressed out from going under, yeah. and that's why I was hearing fireworks. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have not heard that. So that's my procedure in a nutshell. Oh, and then uh, directly after I was waking up, they're like, here's some fucking 4K HDS pictures of your butthole. <laughs> Great. I never Lovely. want to see that again. Please put it away. Take it far away. Was it like Shoot the, it into space. Was it like the inside or was it actually just like, well, here's you just laying on the table and yep. yours is getting I, close. It was both. <laughs> <laughs> here's the outside of your butthole. Here's the inside. Here's even <laughs> further. Here's like all the way up to your small intestine. Did they go, you can keep these. <clears throat> yeah, I have them in a little folder. Oh, cool. Perfect. <laughs> the worst. But they, they didn't find anything wrong. Like everything in there looks absolutely normal. Okay. Which is good and bad. Like now yeah. it's just kind of a waiting game because they, they took a bunch of biopsies. So they are sending those to be tested to see if it's something microscopic that's wrong with me. So I am still yeah. experiencing all the symptoms, but they have me on a pill right now that is making me very normal. So it's making me happy. <laughs> so you could maybe have like a parasite or something. I think if it was a parasite, they would have seen it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how parasites work. I don't know, because I'm just trying to think of, like, what would be my... Like, if something's microscopic and in there causing a problem, I feel like it's something that just doesn't belong there. You know? Yeah. I figured that after the fucking reckoning that was the laxative drink, I would just Maybe be, you're just good now. That's what I would hope, but no, all the symptoms have persisted. Oh. oh boo. Yeah. Because I went to eat right after the procedure. I was like, I want to 
big quesadilla and I'm going to eat it with a milkshake. I'm going to dunk it in the milkshake <laughs> like a feral animal. And I did that. And then my body was like, we still don't like food. So, Why would you give us food? We told yeah. you. No more of that. Take the food away. <laughs> Since we're talking about procedures, like we had yours. Mm-hmm. Is that like the only like real, because that's the first time you've gone under. Yeah, right? that's the first time I've been knocked out by anesthesia. I also had my wisdom teeth done, which yeah. was, I wasn't put under. They gave me like a bunch of anxiety medicine. So I was just like kind of a noodle in the chair and I was, yeah. you know, numbed up and everything and put on laughing gas. Because see, almost nobody that I've talked to that has had their wisdom teeth out was put under and I was. Really? You were put totally out? Yeah. Like, I was, I was done. Did they do the IV and everything, or? Um, yeah, I think so. Wow. Because... Did you have all four of them? Yeah. Okay, I only had two. Because mine was kind of like your story. Oh, well, first of all, if I fell asleep and I was dreaming about Overwatch, the voice lines that I would say would totally be Bastion. <laughs> weep, weep, weep. And they would just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> He's become a robot. <laughs> We've awakened him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when I got my wisdom teeth out, um, so I will preface when I went to get looked at to get my wisdom teeth out, right? Uh huh. I remember going, and the guy was like, "Can you open your mouth?" And so, like, I just opened my mouth, and he's like, "Ooh, that's that's not very wide. We might have some trouble getting the the teeth out." And I was like, "Oh." You just want to see, like, how wide my mouth goes. <laughs> and then I just, like, kind of unhinged my jaw and, like, opened my mouth. And he goes, oh, we ain't got no problem getting these fucking teeth out. This is great. This is great. Nice. Okay, we're good. We're good there. So <laughs> when I went, I was sitting in the chair doing all the stuff. And they gave me laughing gas. Yeah. So, like, the little ball they put on your nose or whatever. Uh-huh. Well, I have a crooked nose. You do? Yeah. My nose is totally crooked. I've never noticed. Which which I'll get into with my other procedure. Okay. <laughs> I have not had a rhinoplasty, if that's where you're going. All right. I have not had that. So it is still crooked. But so it was crooked, and I never really breathed through my nose when I was younger. I, like, always breathe through my mouth. Yeah. And Your mouth breather. <laughs> see, people say that, but I'm like, I don't know what that means, because when I breathe through my mouth, it's totally quiet. That's good, because some people are just like, like, I don't, (gasps) (gasps) I like just breathe, but it's through my mouth. I've never understood why mouth breathing is so loud for some people, because it's totally normal (laughs) for me. I mean, ever since, well, anyway, so I sit in the chair, they put the little ball on, I'm doing the laughing gas, they leave, and then they come back, and they're like, oh, you feeling it yet? I was like, no. No. And then they, like, watch me for a bit, and and then she goes, you're breathing through your mouth. You have to breathe through your nose. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm I'm sorry. So I, like, made a point to, like, 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 really breathe through my nose. And, like, I kind of got tingly, and I remember sitting there, and I was like, why do they call it laughing gas? Like, I always thought it just made you instantly laugh, and I was like, I "I don't feel like laughing at all. TV makes you think that laughing gas makes you laugh, and it doesn't yeah and i thought that was funny that i wasn't going to laugh so i was like just about to laugh right (laughs) because i thought it was funny that i was like it doesn't even do that (laughs) i was gonna laugh right yeah and just i go to laugh the doctor comes in i go and i just like turn and look at him so i never (laughs) got to laugh (laughs) so no laughing on the laughing gas for this guy and so he comes in, and he's like, all right, you feeling it yet? And I was like, yeah, it just feels like a little tingling. And he goes, okay, well, now we're going to do the medicine. Um, I'm going to count to three, and then you should be out, like, way before then. And I was like, Psh, whatever. And he goes, one, two. And then the nurse was like, all right, it's time to wake up. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> what is going on? And I just remember her, like, picking me up off the table, and she was like, all right, your mom's gonna, like, pick you up out at, at here. And she was trying to walk me through the hallway, and I was just, like, slumping all on her, and was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, total ragdoll. Totally didn't dream. Didn't really feel anything else. And I remember That's being good. awake and fine the rest of the time. Did you have to have uh, stitches in your mouth? Um, 
No, I don't think Man, so. They had to stitch mine up. It was gross. I just was told, like, watch what you eat and stuff, and I'd had, like, noodles or something, and when I went back for a checkup, they were like, oh, there's noodles in here! Oh, no! So I just had to, like, squirt it out, and, like, to this day, I swear, <laughs> sometimes I just feel like a little noodle flavor enter my mouth, because it's still stuck back there somewhere. God. That's awful. But so, ever since I got my wisdom teeth out, my jaw has popped. Really? Yeah, and when people see me do it, they get really concerned. <laughs> I've seen you pop your jaw. It's a little bit concerning. Yeah, dude. If So, <laughs> it's first thing in the morning. I have to crack it first thing in the morning because it's real stiff, right? Yeah. And then if I sit too long and, like, I'm not talking or not really doing anything else, it'll, like, build up again. And mm-hmm. then, like, I'll fucking pop it. Ugh. And it's just, like, just crack. I can't do that. If I pop my jaw, it's an absolute accident and I'm out of commission for like 30 minutes. Oh man, like I have to do it. Like I can feel it. So all day long, people can probably see me like moving my jaw around because uh-huh. I'm trying to make sure it stays loose. And it doesn't really pop as much anymore since I got braces. When did you have your wisdom teeth out? So probably junior. So the summer before I was a senior in high school. You were pretty young. I had mine out when I was like 20. 20- seven well so i was gonna get braces and they were like well does he have his wisdom teeth and my mom was like yeah and they go oh well he should probably get those out first because if they grow in they're just gonna fuck up all the work we do yeah so do that first so that summer no so i may have gotten those out the summer going into my junior year yeah because then the next summer i had my next surgery which was my nose so what you do to your nose? So I can't believe you didn't know that. I had a deviated septum so uh-huh. bad. Like, <laughs> like, dude, like one whole side of my nose was just essentially blocked off. What? Yeah, dude. That's bad. Dang. No wonder like, you're a mouth breather. Like, I never knew what it was like to breathe through my nose well. Oh my god, know? that sucks. That's the one that I remember the IV on the most. Because I had to actually, like, go to a hospital and, like, sit in the waiting room and do all that kind of shit, you know? Yeah. And I remember, like, putting on the gown and, like, so the IV was on, like, the top of my hand. Yeah. Right? Because I have fucking gigantic-ass veins on the top of my hand. Like, both of them. (laughs) They're just, like, right there. It's so easy. I feel like more nurses should know to stick you in the hand and the fucking elbow. Like, I can't even see my veins in my elbow. How are you seeing them? I can see them in my hand. Yeah. So, I remember her doing that. I did not like that. It it was really, really cold, and then I kind of forgot about it. Yeah, I hate hate how an IV feels. It's just the worst. I was really scared of the deviated septum one, because they told me that there was a chance I may not be able to smell again. What? Yeah. Can you imagine? Like, I mean, I will honestly say my 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 smelling ability is probably 50% of what it was. What? I definitely do not smell things like, like I used to. Wow. I kind of don't have a good ability to, like, pick different things apart. I'm just like, that is this type of scent. So it all just smells, like, good or bad? That's floral. <laughs> That's fruity. That's it's kind of hard to, like, pick out the differences. Wow. And so, uh, Walk Hard... So, Walk Hard came out when I had that surgery. Uh-huh. So, I'm gonna guess 2008. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because I think I... Because you know I'm good with them with the movie dates. That was my senior year, so that was your junior year. What? No, you're, like, extra... I was extra like, ad- whoa. whoa. <laughs> I'm not flip, older than you. Flip that Opposite. around. I typed in Walk Ward. Walk Ward. <laughs> <laughs> Walk hard. 2007! Right, oh. Close. Okay. So it was your senior year. Yeah. So uh, he goes smell blind in that movie. And I was like, I'm gonna oh. fucking be like Dewey Cox. I'm gonna oh, smell no. anything until I smell shit when I'm 80. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I definitely think that my sense of smell is considerably not as fine-tuned as it was. Damn. I had no idea. Yeah, like, Taylor will smell stuff all the time, and I'm like, I don't really smell anything. (laughs) And then, like, once you bring it to my attention, I kind of pick up on it. Yeah. But I'm not just, like, alerted by my sense of smell. Huh. 
I mean, I, I definitely you smell die stuff. Like a gas explosion or something, because you won't smell it. I mean, I definitely smell stuff, but I just don't. I don't know. It doesn't really like do anything for me, you know. <laughs> okay. I think that's I. I think that's where my like robotic eye thing came in. I lost some smell, and it filtered up to my eye senses. <laughs> But so I was really scared in that one because they were like, all right, you, you, well, well, you know, you might lose your sense of smell, right? Yeah. But then they go, so when we do it, we're going to have to pack so much gauze up in your sinuses. Oh, gross. He was like literally like feet of gauze up both nostrils. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right? And I was so scared of that because he was like, and then after a few weeks, we have to pull that shit out. Was it, like, just covered in dried blood? How did they pull it out? So, when I woke up, I was oh. so scared. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe I have gauze in my nose. And he goes, oh, my God, your surgery went so good, we didn't even have to do that. And I was like, oh, yes! good. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> so I didn't have gauze in there. I had no idea what that was going to be like. I can't imagine. Uh, you I know did how, like, not have to suffer that. You ever been, like, wearing a sock and then, like... Your foot bleeds, you get, like, a blister that pops or something, and then you have to, like, peel the sock off, and then the scab comes with it. No. Oh, I feel like that's that's how it would be to pull gauze out of your nose. Like, all the all the blood just... Uh, I, uh, I don't want to... Uh, uh, I do not I mean, think about it. I've had, like, like, a sweaty sock that then dried, and then you gotta, like, peel it off, but it's, like, kind of <laughs> harder or whatever. Ew. Like, I've had that. But no, I've never had a blister and had to peel off part of me to get the sock off too this is our gross st- grossest episode to date i'm so sorry listeners i put it as a trigger warning i've said it twice <laughs> i said put it, it in the show twice though. oh god i put it up there twice for you guys like no joke you ever like so you had full anesthesia for that one too right yeah but this is real life man we don't we don't shirk from real life no way man i but I yeah just... but they didn't do the whole countdown thing i honestly don't remember that one at all Really? I just remember sitting in the waiting room. I was watching, like, Seinfeld on TV. Yeah. And I was like, man, I wish they would change this. And then they were, like, wheeling me in there, and then nothing else. See, even on my, my wisdom teeth surgery, like, I was not put under, but yeah. I still don't remember some of it. Like, I remember vaguely things that were happening, but I was kind of out of it. So, like, they had to really crank on one of my teeth because it was impacted it was growing sideways or something so the doctor like had pliers in my mouth and he was like (laughs) using he had his knee up on the arm of the dentist chair and was just like full two hands in my mouth trying to yank that some bitch out of there and i remember just the sound of my jaw just being like yeah it's like ah finally got the tooth it's like oh my god thank you get off of me (laughs) and then Apparently, when I was, like, coming out of the anesthesia, or uh-huh. out of the, like, fugue state that the pills had put me in, I apparently asked Richard to show me the tooth, but I okay. don't remember that happening. So That's I wake up, awesome. and he's just holding the tooth in front of my face, and I was like, and what the like, fuck why? is wrong with you? Get away from me! You said. Yeah, that's just like you don't. You wanted to see it. Why would I want to see that? Put it down. Why do you have my tooth? So, when I got braces... Uh, my two, like, carnivore teeth, I guess. Uh-huh. Those are your incisors, right? The fangs? Yeah. Dim fangies? Okay. So, the fangies were, like, way higher, right? Uh-huh. And so, when they put all... All right, so they put the brackets on, right? Mm-hmm. Did you have braces? Nope. Me perfect teeth person, you. Eh, they're all right. So, <laughs> so basically, they put a square bracket on each and every tooth, right? Yeah. And there's kind of like a little door on the front. What? And they, yeah, so there's like a little like hinge on the front. And they slide the wire in the back one and then they snap the wire into all the brackets going all the way across. Right? Okay. And that's how they do braces. Huh. So there was one one bracket that the wire couldn't quite reach because it, because it was being held out so far by the, by the fangy. Right? Oh no. And so they were like, all right, well, when things like level out, we'll hook it in. So like a couple months go by and they go, oh, it's finally close enough that we can do it. Let's snap that bad boy in there. 
And I remember she like pressed on the wire, and she was like, all right, all right, I can't really, I can't really get it. And then you could see her like really lean in. Oh. And then she straight up climbs onto the chair with me <laughs> with her knee, and her knee's in it too, and she's just like, Bah! just like pushing this wire in, and then it clicks, and she goes, all right, cool, there, there we go. Oh, While I'm oh just God. like wide-eyed, sweating in the chair, just like, <gasps> <gasps> okay, cool. All right, cool. We're good. And since that day, because I never complain about shit, and it never really hurts to the point that, like, I'm like, ah, right? Yeah. So the lady that always worked on me was was having to do someone else. She had a, like, trainee doing me, right? Okay. <laughs> and, like, she goes, okay, well, we have to do this. And she was like, well, just, um, just, uh, well, I don't want to hurt you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So she taps that lady on the shoulder and was like, so I have to do this, but I don't really know if it's going to hurt him. And she looks around and goes, that's Robert. He'll be fine. Just do it. <laughs> that's the guy with the most pain tolerance. We put Olga on him. And she does the thing and goes, did I hurt you? And I was like, I don't even know what you did. <laughs> and she was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I just sit there like it's fine. I just don't yeah. want to know what it is. Just don't tell me and don't let me think about it. I'm like the total opposite. I want to know exactly what you're doing. No. I don't want to know Ugh. nothing. Medical procedures, man. That's pretty much all I've had. I, I, I had the nose, wisdom teeth, and braces. Like, I, I've, I, I've never ugh. broken anything. Yeah, knock on fucking wood. I've never broken yeah. anything either. There you go. I knocked. Thank you. Um, so, here's one thing. Because you brought it up, have you kept... And I know that you have the pictures from this one, but have you ever kept anything from a procedure? Absolutely not. Like, that tooth, just, like, having it in my face for the briefest moments, I, yeah. I don't want to keep that. I did keep my braces when they finally took those off. I thought you were going to say you kept your deviated septum just, like, no. in a little jar. I don't even know what that would have looked like. Just a little flap of skin. But I kept my braces... And actually one time, so I'll post these pictures because I just think they're really, really cool, right? Okay. I was at the eye doctor and it was just a normal, normal procedure, right? It was just like, oh yeah, let's check and see if, you know, one, two, one, two. It's just that thing. Yeah. But he was taking a picture of the insides of my eye for whatever reason. Oh, that shit's so cool. Right? And so it's six different circle pictures that then they like place on each other that forms the entire inside of your eye right and the guy god he fucking loved me because i was his first (laughs) patient there right okay so he loved me he fucking just just loved me because i always came back and he was great right and so he was like oh yeah you want to know like what i do with them like here's what happens and like you place them together and i was like oh can i like can i get a copy of those and he goes fuck yeah you can (laughs) So I have a picture of the inside of my left and my right eye. That's so cool. And they're really cool looking. And I just pop them up from time to time and go, ew, cool. That's my squishy eyeballs. Now, I will admit, if I had a picture of the inside of my butt. Oh my god. I don't know that I would care as much. It's just a pink tube. Like, that's all we are inside, guys. We are one big pink tube that just snakes from your mouth all the way down to your butt. Oh, yeah. Like, I've seen pick because uh, my mom has diverticulitis, which is why I knew what that was to say, maybe you have this, right? Okay, yeah. And so I remember her bringing home, like, pamphlets and stuff and, like, showing, like, what it is, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that looks like some weird, like, alien terrain. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just nothing, you know? It's yeah. It's just this, like, pink surface and then, like, a dark, <clears throat> like, no light at the end, you know? That's what we are inside. It's really, really weird. I, I I can't think too long about what humans are like inside. We're just we're just big, fragile sacks of meat, you guys. Just meat. Yeah, dude, we're just meat. Like, so I think about you know how sometimes you'll hear like an ant can fall one hundred stories and be totally fine, right? Yes. And we can fall like ten feet and like break everything. Yeah. Why are we so fragile? I don't know. We're not built for good (laughs) like we are the most fragile creation on this planet 
Except for babies, man. Babies are surprisingly solid. Yeah. But it's like... weird. Like, they're made to bounce. <laughs> and not that well, I ever bounced a baby, personally. That's because but... they know the whole soft tissue rule. The soft tissue rule. So, like, if you get in a car wreck and stuff, you're supposed to go completely limp. Oh, right? yeah. You're supposed to go limp because your soft tissue will kind of bounce everything around and kind of absorb all the shock and stuff. Yeah, but, but the if nature brace, of humans is to go fully stiff. <laughs> yeah, you go stiff, your bones and stuff take the pressure, and they break. They crack. Yeah, babies are like wet noodles. Humans, raw spaghetti. Yeah, yeah they don't know how, how to go stiff, so they just bounce all around, you know? Which is good for them. But we're all stupid and get all like, <laughs> oh, hunker down, and then we break everything. Stupid bones. <laughs> Why did you grow so many? <laughs> like, ugh. We're just we're just awful creations. That's all we are. So fragile, so nothing. This is getting very existential. <laughs> That's what we're good for. I know. We go deep, remember? Go deep. Right your, down that pink tube. Your, your sister's gonna write us and say, okay, the human psyche, go deep. <laughs> and we're gonna be like, oh man, get ready for five hours of just meandering conversation. <laughs> That's all this podcast is. I've tried, I've like tried to help Taylor with like a problem before and then it turned into like a whole philosophical like <laughs> just wondering worse of problem. us. <laughs> yeah. And I like remember her one at like one point just like staring at me and I was like, what? And she's like, I don't even know what you're talking about, but it's been going on for a long time. Then <laughs> <laughs> I was like. I can see how I got here, but we are nowhere on topic with what the original thing was. It, like, went from, like, this person was mean to, like, have you ever thought about how, like, we're just meat sacks or something, you know? (laughs) I guess you just distracted her from the initial problem. Yeah. But I just left her more confused. All right, let's uh, shuffle off this mortal coil. Please tell your friends about us. Help us grow this lovely audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Because we release weekly, every Monday. And as we just discovered, this is the 30th Monday. 30 Mondays in a row. That's almost a year, dude. I mean, it's like half a year. I know, but still, like, 52, we're only like 22 away. Yeah. That's like Well, well over half a year, man. But, like, take into account the double episodes. But if you have a second, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. That helps us out so much. But I haven't even checked it in a long time. Me either. <laughs> you can find us and friend us on social media. We are at YMBTOAP on Twitter and Instagram. Why don't you come over and interact with us? Tweet at us. Tag us in your grams. You could uh, tag a friend. Be like, hey, look at this podcast. I really enjoy be I sure think to I like saw and... some tags from a, from a Twitter about us. Oh, really? I've seen a bunch of people, like, adding us or, like, saying stuff about us or something. Hell yeah, I've been active on Twitter. Come talk I, to me. I know we got two Instagram followers not too long ago. Fuck yeah. So, pfft. Let's get some more follows on that Facebook page. Be yeah. sure to like it and subscribe. You can also email us at ymbtoap at gmail.com. We want your listener mail. Tell us about your procedures. I really... I want to know what what anesthesia is like for everybody, Ugh, for everybody. I can't even speak. Maybe I'm under anesthesia right now. There's no certain way to tell. So one of the worst procedures I've ever heard, or well, I mean, it didn't go bad, but it was Stu telling me about getting his appendix out. Oh. Now that's something I've never done. I don't personally know anybody besides Stu, right? My brother-in-law had to have that done. My cousin had it done actually not too long ago. But so he told me the story and I found out some stuff that I was like, whoa, did not know that. Well, so he got it out like just in time, right? Yeah. Before it like busted open or something. Yeah. And he was so, so he gets put in recovery after the surgery and he sits next to a guy who's been in the hospital for two months. Whoa. Because his did rupture and it essentially ruptures poison into your body. So they were having yeah. to do follow ups to scoop out this poison aren't humans fucking stupid we have a poison sack inside of us that has no use (laughs) and sometimes it just blows up yeah so yeah tell us tell us your wildest procedure the worst one you got the easiest one you got 
And yeah, the anesthesia one's a good one, because yes. I know some people that it doesn't really work on them. Tell me if you have exploding head syndrome. Yeah, because I'd never even heard of that until today, so give us some more experiences with that and what it was like. Yeah. Our theme song is The Grim Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. It's getting close to halloween time. Time to Ooh. jam this song all the time. Heck yeah. Uh, be sure to check him out on YouTube. Such good music. All kinds of stuff is on that page. And as always, thanks for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. What are they going to cut off of me? One more important sound we wanted you to hear. We've been talking about dildos for four minutes. Let's get this one going. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Straight <laughs> face. Time to podcast. Get serious. <clears throat> serious okay. business. Here we go. <clears throat>